Hello, welcome to vlog number six. In this one, work in progress featuring a pair of bedside tables which I've just finished, some Urkel restorations, and a quick look at a chair repair project. Recommended viewing, which is where I recommend some YouTube channels which I've been enjoying recently. I'll talk about my new camera gear since my old camera has broken, and Tool Talk featuring Hikoki tools, Barco scraper, and some new F clamps. As usual, you'll find the times for each section of the video on screen now and in the description box in case you want to skip to the parts that you're interested in. Work in progress. My most recently finished project is two matching bedside tables. I'm really pleased with how these turned out and this will be an upcoming video on my channel once I catch up on lots of editing. These were inspired by a piece of furniture I saw in the most amazing shop I've ever been in a few weeks back when I went away to a seaside town called Margate in Kent for the weekend. The shop was called RG Scots and if you're ever in the area I'd highly recommend visiting. It's a huge building, three floors full of furniture and bits and pieces ranging from antiques, mid-century modern stuff, lots of woodworking and restoration stuff, shelves full of pieces of wood veneer, racks full of old table legs, filing cabinets full of old drawer handles, hinges, some vintage woodworking tools, basically all of my favourite things and there's just so much to see. I just wish there was something similar closer to where I live in Norfolk. A few weeks ago I found a couple of old rusty hand saws in a skip by the side of a road and I thought about having a go at restoring one of them but the teeth are in such bad shape and these are cheap saws anyway so it doesn't really seem worth the effort. But then I had another idea which is to make some card scrapers using the steel from these saws. I could do with a few more card scrapers, it'd be good to have one for the van and an extra one to switch over to when my main one gets dull so I can carry on working in the workshop. That'll be another video coming soon. I explained in my last vlog that I was dropping hours at my day job from five to three days a week. That started about two months ago and so far it's going really well. I've had a lot of paid work to do recently, mainly furniture repairs and restorations, so that's kept me really busy. After my recent video about refinishing an Urkel giraffe room divider, link to that in the description box, I also refinished an Urkel drop leaf dining table too for the same client, which I didn't bother filming because it went through a very similar process to the room divider, and I don't want to repeat content on my channel. While I was working on that dining table, I ended up falling in love with it a bit and once I delivered it back to the client, I immediately started to look around to see if I could find one to buy for myself. And I ended up finding one on Facebook ads. Here it is, and I picked this up for £150, which is a great price for one of these. It's such a nice table, so well made. I might refinish the top at some point because there are some minor scratches and I now need to get rid of my old dining table for which I also have a restoration video on my channel. Link to that video in the description box below too. I'll probably just try and sell that locally. And I've also just refinished a solid Elm Urkel sideboard for the same client again. I didn't film that one either because it was the same process as the room divider too. I've also repaired and restored an old chair for a neighbour and that is a project that I did try to film because I thought that one was quite interesting but unfortunately my camera broke during that project so I only captured about half of it. More about the broken camera later in this video. The chair had a cracked leg, a missing corner bracket and loose joints so I disassembled it, cleaned up the joints, re-glued them and then I made new corner brackets for it. And I also made a seat pad for it out of some 12mm MDF which I scribed and shaped to match the shape of the chair frame. The client is going to be upholstering the chair herself so I didn't need to do that part. And I gave it a bit of a clean up too as there was quite a bit of damage, scratches and scrapes which I sanded smooth, re-oiled and refinished with spray varnish. The biggest challenge with that project was clamping up the frame after I had re-glued the joints because of the awkward shape of the chair frame. It was really difficult to get clamps on there. So lots of repairs and restorations recently and not so many build projects but I'm deliberately not turning down any paid work anymore as obviously I need to pay the bills since my income has reduced since dropping my hours at my day job and I'm conscious that I probably won't always be as busy as I am now so while paid work is coming in I'm just trying to get through it all. So I'm hoping to get back to doing some more build projects soon. Uh, in fact yesterday I started a project which I'll be working on with one of my mates who you might recognise from a few older videos. Here's a sneak peek of it to see if you can guess what it's going to be. Recommended viewing. 
This is where I'd like to suggest a few channels that I've been really enjoying recently. Links to all of the channels are included in the description box below. This month I've been binge watching the Thomas Johnson Restoration channel. I've seen a few of his videos before but I suddenly got totally hooked on them and there are loads to watch. His channel mainly covers restoration and repair to furniture and other wooden items, lots of antiques, some mid-century modern stuff, some musical instruments. It's just brilliant. He shares so much of his knowledge in the videos and he's a real master at what he does. If you're into repairs and restoration, definitely check it out and even if you're not, at least check out the video which I'll link to in the description box below which is a compilation put together by one of his viewers which is of Thomas saying it looks pretty good which he says at the end of each video. That video is hilarious. The second channel I want to talk about is The Poultry People. This is a channel by Bongo Woodhouse and I'd say it's a woodworking channel with more of an artisan kind of feel. Really creative projects with a strong identity and style. He does some wood burning, some pyrography, did I say that right? And he uses lots of reclaimed materials, pallet wood, cable drums, really great stuff and his beautiful cat Butters features regularly in his videos too, as if you needed another reason to watch. Next is Pask Makes by Neil based in Australia. This is quite a big channel that for some reason I only recently came across when I saw his video for his handheld slot mortiser which inspired my recent build and there is so much great content here, some brilliant workshop projects and ideas and he's recently been doing a scrap wood challenge on his channel where he has made several projects out of firewood. You should definitely check that out too. New camera gear. The camera I've been using to shoot my videos for the past year seems to be dead. I bought it new just over a year ago and I'm surprised that it's broken so soon but I guess the amount of dust and occasional knocks and bumps that it gets in the workshop have probably taken their toll. I'd noticed it doing this flickering thing and that gradually started to get worse and worse until it got to the point where I was filming a video mid-project and I just realised that I couldn't use it anymore. Anyway, I ended up choosing this, the Canon EOS 200D with an 18-55 STM lens, both second-hand on eBay for good prices, the lens was £55 and the body was £284. The reasons I chose this camera are as follows. Firstly, it was relatively inexpensive compared to some of the other options and that's really important because cameras don't seem to last too well in workshop use so I didn't want to spend loads of money and then have to replace everything soon after. I also wanted to upgrade to a DSLR and this was the cheapest option which had all of the features that I wanted. Secondly, I'd heard that the autofocus tracking on this camera is really good and that's really important for video. And also the lens I got, which is actually the kit lens I think, the 18-55 f3.5 to f5.6 is the STM version which means that the camera refocuses quietly without the motor noise. And thirdly, it had all of the features that I wanted such as the tilty flippy screen which makes framing whatever you're filming much easier because you can easily see what you're filming and a microphone input which means I can use my existing Rode microphone with the body for better audio quality than the built-in microphone in the camera. Also as it's a DSLR it has a bigger sensor and therefore will offer better image quality than the camcorder one I was using before and I'm hoping that it will be a bit more robust and last longer than my previous camera. Another positive is if dust gets inside the lens and that becomes a problem I can just buy a new lens without having to replace the body. I've also bought a UV filter just for an added bit of protection for the front of the lens and to help stop dust getting in there and a couple of spare batteries and a USB charger too so that when the battery runs out I can swap it over straight away and carry on filming. There are only two things I don't like about this camera so far. Firstly, when playing back footage on the camera, which I do occasionally just to make sure I captured what I needed, the fast forwarding and rewinding is really cumbersome. You have to hold down a button and it takes a long time. As it has a touch screen, I really don't know why they don't allow you to skip instantly just by pressing the progress bar where you want to skip to, which is exactly how it worked on my old Panasonic camera. The second thing I don't like is there's no audible alert when the battery is close to running out, so sometimes if the battery dies while I'm filming something, I continue working without knowing it's no longer recording. The Panasonic made a bleeping sound when the battery was about to die, so I just need to keep my eye on the battery level indicator which is on screen. 
Other than that, I've been really happy with it. The image quality is a huge improvement and if you're interested in making videos, I think it's a really good option. I'll put some Amazon links in the description box if you're interested in checking out the camera and the lens. Tool Talk. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you may remember around nine months ago that Hitachi sent me lots of their cordless tools. And since then, I've been using those instead of my Makita cordless tools, and I've been really happy with them. Since then, though, Hitachi have rebranded their range of tools to Hikoki, and they've sent me their new line of tools, many of which have been redeveloped for their new multivolt system. I won't talk about this in too much detail in this video because I want to put together a separate video all about these tools which is something I know that I said I'd do a long time ago and since then I've been getting loads of messages from viewers asking when that video would be finished but I've just been so busy with other things. But I'm in the process of shooting that video now so expect to see that in the next couple of weeks. Most of the Hitachi tools that I have are being donated to my local men's shed which is here in Norwich. The Men's Shed Association hosts social workspaces for makers across the UK and in other countries helping to reduce loneliness and isolation among men in local communities. I'll leave a link in the description box to their website where you can find out more and you can also donate to the charity via the website if you'd like to support what they do. A huge thank you to Hitachi Hikoki for their generosity with the tools, I can't wait to try them out. I mentioned earlier in the video that I've been binge watching Thomas Johnson's YouTube channel and I saw him using a tool in a few of his videos that I really liked the look of so I left him a comment and he told me it was a scraper by Barco so I immediately went and bought one. This is the Barco 625 scraper. It has a triangular blade fitted as standard but there are two other shaped blades that you can buy as optional extras. I'll probably just stick with the triangular one. This thing works so well. It has three cutting edges so you can rotate it when one side gets dull but the blade is solid carbide so it stays sharp apparently for up to 100 times longer than a conventional steel blade. At least that's what the marketing information says on the Axminster website. It also comes with a holster which is pretty cool. Draw. I've already used it a lot, works great for scraping paint, varnish, old glue or even just bare wood and it's very comfortable to hold, I really like it. I'll leave a link to this in the description box if you're interested in buying one. I also bought some new F-clamps on Amazon as my old ones are in pretty rough shape now and also we all know that a woodworker can never have enough clamps. These came as a set of 12 clamps, four 150mm with a 50mm throat, four 300mm with a 50mm throat and four 600mm with an 80mm throat. And I was really surprised at the build quality of these considering they're quite cheap, especially compared to my old cheap clamps which are a bit nasty really. Anyway, I'll leave a link to these in the description box below too. That's it for Tool Talk this time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos and thank you for watching. The Men's Shed Association hosts That's a f***ing mouthful. The Men's Shed Association hosts social The Men's Shed Association hosts social workspaces. <laughs> the Men's Shed Association hosts social workspaces.